So, say I can have a time delta, and say u of delta, um, and say I'll have delta times a really big number n is equal to my time, then if I consider this, this is just this multiplied n times, um, I'll get u of t. So I can put this product in here, and now I can separate this. So let's do that. Now we can have and in order to deal with each of these different potentials, I have to introduce identities everywhere. So this is sort of like u of delta, u of delta, dot dot dot. And in order to get rid of the potential here, I need to introduce an identity here, I need to introduce an identity here, and that way I can operate on the identity, and I can get the thing out. So, now, we will do this by considering some xk's, where can I erase, get rid of this. So, consider a set of xk's where, say, x, say, this is xa, xn, xb, and then I can just have a labeling of xk's. And we will want to consider this product that we're getting out. because then this thing is just going to become the integral over all the x's and the product of each of these over each k. So I just want to consider this one. So this one, um, this is equal to, I can split this up now, so I can just bring the potential out, e minus i t v of x k over h bar, and this is e to the minus i t p squared over 2 m h bar x k. Okay. Now, I still want to try getting rid of this product, but it's not necessarily something I could do because this is not an eigenstate of the momentum operator. So somehow I gotta get an eigenstate of the momentum operator in there. So we can do that by introducing more ones. So now for some x, I'll say I'll introduce one there and I'll introduce one there. And instead, these ones are going to become the integral of PP. So these are, say, P. Uh, well, this one's going to be plus one. And remember, these things were just So if I introduce these momentum eigenstates, then um, I'm just about to use this, so I don't need it anymore. I can get rid of this guy. This becomes e minus i t b x k over h bar integral d p k plus one four. Well, actually, I only need one of these. Actually, I only need one. I don't need this k plus one. My apologies. I only need one. Sorry, I was thinking of doing the thing with the x's again, but I only need one. Just because if I have one, say, here, I can just apply it onto the one here, and I can get rid of this thing. So I only need one, one of these ones. So then this becomes Okay, now I can evaluate this guy. This is just going to give me a k here, and I can bring this out. So now this is no longer an operator. This is just a number, a scalar. And I need to integrate this guy. So the thing is, now we are going to just use the 
formula for this that we all clearly remember from quantum mechanics. Um, we know that xp we know this guy. We can clearly remember this. So um, I can sub this in. So this inner product will just become e i p k x k plus one over h bar. And this one is just this complex conjugated, but with x k. So this is e minus i p k x k over h bar. Now. Yes, so also what we're going to do, since these are scalars, I can put these together. I don't have the same problem I have with the operators. These are just scalars, and I can put this into this. So let's do that. Um, so this becomes minus xk here. E minus it. P squared over 2 and k bar. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to introduce a notation. I'm just going to introduce a notation. If the number of these k's is becoming very, very large, this is almost going to become sort of like an infinitesimal. So we can think of this as sort of a velocity. I mean, this thing is going to sort of become like a dx. Maybe, maybe I can put a k there. So we're just going to introduce the notation that xk plus 1 minus xk. This is sort of like dx, and if I divide by delta, I will just get xk dot. So I just want to introduce this notation just to make things a little bit cleaner. So I can sub in here. This is over xk dot delta h bar. And this shouldn't be a t, this should be a delta. Because we're considering u of delta, not u of t. So now we need to evaluate this integral, and we remember we're going to get, um, where can I write now? Let's see, I don't really need this. Let's start with mm -hmm. now. Okay, and I'm just going to write t plus delta n here. Oh, sorry. This integral e minus i t v x. This is just the factor we had out in front, and we can evaluate this exactly. This should become the square root. Now, if this, our a should be what? i delta minus over 2m h bar, so the square root of pi over this thing, I should get i delta, That's, I think so. And we should get e to the b squared over a. So b squared is going to become minus pk squared, xk dot squared, delta squared, h bar squared. And we're now dividing by a and a 4. So we get a 4 here, and we get a 2 here, m h bar, and we're getting an i delta. So we are able to cancel one of these. We're able to cancel one of these. Okay, and yeah. So, and we can cancel these. 2i h bar. Okay, so e to the minus p k squared. Oh no, the p, the p didn't go there. What, what am I thinking? The p is what's being integrated over. We're getting rid of that. Now, if you look at this, um, maybe I put the i in the front too, just to get rid of the i sign. If you look at this, m x dot squared over two is kind of like the momentum squared. And why do I keep having these t's? I'm sorry. This is distracting. This is like the momentum squared. So this is sort of like e to the i pk squared delta over h bar. Um, this is sort of like the momentum because it's just mv squared over 2. 
So this is just sort of like, well, maybe I should say the kinetic energy. Kinetic energy. Um, not momentum. It's like the kinetic energy because it's mv squared over 2. It's the kinetic energy. And if I combine these exponentials up to some phase factor here, this becomes e to the i d Now, if you recognize this, this is just the Lagrangian of a system. And so now, if I go back to this integral, I get the integral over a whole bunch of xi's. So, or I think I called it xk, so let's be consistent. And this is times some amplitude. So I'll say this is 1 over some amplitude to the n where I have some amplitude, and because it doesn't really matter that much. Well, it does, but e to the i times the Lagrangian times delta over h bar. And I'm summing over all of these. xk, and I'm summing over all of these. And this is a function of x and xk, the Lagrangian. So this sort of becomes like an integral because delta is becoming very small, and I'm just getting a Lagrangian. So this is like the integral of the Lagrangian. But that's the action. So we say this is e to the i action. And that's in the limit as n is going to infinity. And so when n is going to infinity, I'll combine the a to the n. And I'll combine this term. And I'll just call it, say, dx. Uh, that, that's way too big of a d. That's not <laughs> dx times e to the Lagrangian, I, or e to the classical action. So this thing is on amplitude. And so I'm not really going to get into evaluating this thing, in part because it's very difficult. Um, for the free particle, it's particularly easy to do, and it's kind of cumbersome to do it for the what's it called, simple harmonic oscillator, and you can do it for the hydrogen atom. And I don't know very many other cases where it's done. You can do it for the free particle pretty easily. You don't even have to resort to this. You can just go right in and just introduce them once, or you can use the path integral. So that's just what I wanted to show you. I just wanted to show you that you could express the amplitude that we're going from xa to xb as this integral, and you get this classical action. Now, it turns out for systems that have potentials of the form I'm not going to prove this. Um, say c x squared, right? Turns out for systems that are like this, um, the actual path integral ends up just becoming e to the i Lagrangian over h, a classical action over h bar. So if this is my potential. I can say that my path integral is just becoming e to the i classical action over h bar. And so this sort of already shows you what happens for the free particle and the simple harmonic oscillator. But yeah, I just thought this was interesting and I just wanted to show you because this is fun. <laughs> Thank you for watching.